uh, let's say you're a renter and uh, you're supposed to pay so and so much a month to rent your apartment or a house or whatever. You make those payments, no problem. You stop making those payments. Landlord says, hey, you owe us money. No, we're not going to make the payments. Well, eventually the landlord will file what's called an unlawful detainer action to get you out. Because of the pandemic, people were not working. Yes, they were getting some of the government largesse, but in at least some cases, they didn't have enough to both put food on the table and pay the rent. As a result, the uh, federal government imposed, and in some states, uh, the states imposed these things, moratoriums on eviction actions. So you couldn't evict somebody during the time of the moratorium. Then uh, it was scheduled to end on July 31st, but uh, it has been reinstated temporarily until October. So that means that if this remains in place, then uh, people aren't going to be evicted from their domiciles. There are some problems, legal problems most particularly with this, but also social problems. Legal problems have to do with whether or not uh, this kind of a moratorium is even legal. Is it uh, constitutional? And one way that this can be viewed is a taking. When the government says you can't kick somebody out of property that you own that, uh, and they're not paying the rent, in essence, the government is taking from you that property. Now, it may be a taking temporarily, but it's a taking nonetheless. And the U.S. Constitution provides that when, they're gov when the government takes something from you, it has to provide you with just compensation. So landlords should be entitled to just compensation based on this taking. The second thing is there's a sanctity of property here. The taking has to be for public use. And uh, keeping a tenant in a house is arguably a private use rather than a public use. So um, the idea that the government could take for private use is called into uh, question, although there is a case, a Supreme Court case called Kelso, in which uh, I believe it was in New Hampshire, um, a town uh, took a house because it wanted to build a shopping mall. And the argument was, well, the shopping mall was not public use, it was private use. But the U.S. Supreme Court said that was okay, it could be done nonetheless. Um, so there is a little bit of a gray area based on that Kelso decision. The other thing is social. Many of these landlords are not big corporations. They're just the little guy. A uh, couple has a house. They've uh, accumulated some life savings. They buy a second house to rent out so that they can have income, let's say, during their retirement. Now, they don't have enough in that life savings to pay, the house, uh, pay for the house outright, so they're making payments on a mortgage. You're renting that place. You stop making the rent payments. Well, where are they going to get the money to pay the mortgage payments? They were depending on the rent that you were paying to pay the mortgage payments. Well, they're falling behind on those mortgage payments each month, and pretty soon they're going to lose the property and their life savings through no fault of their own, but because the federal government stepped in and said, sorry, you can't evict people who aren't paying their rent. So there is a very negative social problem associated with it as well. Now, I can see it from both sides. I'm certainly sympathetic to a renter who has no place to go, doesn't have the income to pay the rent, and doesn't want to become one of the many homeless people that wander around the Los Angeles area, which is just a little bit to the west of where I am. Um, so I can certainly sympathize with that. But then I also have to sympathize with the homeowner who is going to lose his or her life savings because you're not paying the rent and they can't kick you out to get a new tenant who will pay the rent. So it's uh, a difficult situation all the way around. And the federal government coming in to uh, impose this kind of mor moratorium, even if the federal government starts paying the landlords to compensate them for this taking, which, well, I've already talked about uh, some of the legal ins and outs that could be problematic, uh, what that's going to do is rob the rest of the country because as the federal government pays large sums of money out, it has to get that money from someplace.
Well, if tax revenues are insufficient to take care of that, the government borrows the money. And given the amount of money that the federal government has been shoveling out over the last couple of years, it's been borrowing a large amount of money. Now, this has a very serious consequence here. So in order to understand this, let's go back to what we talked about earlier in our session, and that's this idea of interest. Let's just say, for argument's sake, that the federal government pays 5% interest on loans that it takes. In other words, uh, it borrows money from other countries by selling bonds or even borrows money from American citizens by selling bonds. Well, the uh, people who buy the bonds aren't just going to accept uh, the bond and just get paid back the face value uh, that they originally put in. They want to have interest. So the federal government is going to have to pay interest on those loans. So let's say it's a 5% interest, just to choose simple numbers. And let's say the total federal debt is $20 trillion. It's actually a lot more, but just so that the numbers work out. Well, 5% is 1 20th. So that means 5% of 20 trillion is 1 trillion. That means in the budget, the federal government has to set aside $1 trillion just to pay the interest on the loans. Not even talking about return of principal, just the interest on the loans. Well, the debt actually is a lot more, although interest rates are a bit lower right now. But for round numbers, if you've got that kind of a scenario, and let's say you have a budget of $3 trillion, it's been higher now because of the profligate spending, but if you have a budget of $3 trillion, that means one-third of the money that the federal government pays out in that year is just going to interest on the loan. And as the debt grows higher and higher, more and more of the amount that the federal government is spending each year is devoted just to the interest payments. That's money that is not being used to repair roads. That's money that is not being used to keep post offices open. It's not being used for the military. It's not being used for Social Security payments or a whole panoply of other things. So if the government does decide it's going to compensate landlords, by paying the landlords, it's going to be incurring new debt. And that is going to be taking away money from the rest of the things that the federal government has taken upon itself to do. So this is fraught with all kinds of problems. And uh, my own feeling is, well, much as it's going to be hard on renters, it's probably a good idea to let that moratorium expire. But it hasn't expired. Well, it, it did expire, and now it's been extended. 